When it's football time, it's Fanatis time. Get a front row seat at the world's largest stadium and enjoy live and on-demand games from the Spanish La Liga, the best of the passionate South American soccer, and much, much more for only $7.99 a month. Watch anytime and anywhere. From your awkward ride in a taxi, during your afternoon video conference, or even hiding from your family in the bathroom. Sign up today at fanatiswithaz.com slash sports and try it for seven days. Fanatis, the world's largest stadium. Hundred twenty-five, Brandon. We did it. Hundred twenty-fifth episode, the last ever episode of the Tennis Podcast, per our pre-show uh, contract that we signed. I mean, is that true? Is this the last one? I would have probably put more work into the last one. I wouldn't want you to do anything out of the ordinary. Anyway, this is the Tennis Podcast. My name is Nick Amell. I'm your host. We well, should probably tell people if it really is the last episode. It's okay. not the last episode. It's not the last episode. Did you really think it was? The last no. Episode? Okay. It's not the last episode, but it is episode 125, and my name really is Nick Amell, and I'm joined by... Yeah, I'm Brandon. Brandon, this is the show where one of us brings a top 10-inch list and the other tries to guess without knowing what the list is ahead of time, and in honor of our groundbreaking 125th episode, I think we're going on Oprah next week to do a tell-all about how we got this far. She doesn't do a regular show anymore, and it takes a pretty big deal to get her to come out of her cubby hole. Yeah, she just did the royal couple. And uh, she's going to do us next. The other royal couple. Yeah. What's our list today, Brandon? Today, I brought a list for you to guess. It's the top 10 careers for psychopaths. (laughs) Okay. So, number one, podcast host. Number two, daytime talk show host. Number three, president. You're actually not far off already. So, yeah, we're going to talk about the top 10 careers with the highest proportion of psychopaths. This data comes from a psychologist. Uh, named Kevin Dutton from the University of Oxford, who developed this list in researching for his book, The Wisdom of Psychopaths, What Saints, Spies, and Serial Killers Can Teach Us About Success. Saints, Spies, and Serial Killers. Lucky for him on the alliteration there. Interesting. I'm, I'm excited about this. So before we start, maybe we should talk a little bit about what happens when you have a psychopath in the workplace. How does that come out? Yeah, right. So here's the following behavior patterns, which the psychopath in the workplace will show a high number of. These individual behaviors are not exclusive to the workplace psychopath, but the higher number of these patterns of behavior that they have, the more likely they are to conform to a psychopath profile. And here they are. Public humiliation of others. Having a high propensity of having temper tantrums or ridiculing someone's work performance. (laughs) Fuck, I'm two for two so far. (laughs) Yeah. Malicious spreading of lies, being intentionally deceitful. Uh, Remorseless, devoid of guilt. Uh, They frequently lie to push their point. Push their what now? Push their point. Like, yeah, in order, yeah. I mean, there's like, probably each one of us is thinking of at least one person either in like, public life or our personal life that we know already who exhibits some of these behaviors if not yeah i can think of uh a few presidents i mean people that i can think of for sure right and some of which will we may discuss tonight so to continue produces exaggerated bodily expressions uh, like yawn Uh, (laughs) as a means of gaining attention like yawning or sneezing okay or i guess yeah like shaking their butt wiggling their butt (laughs) That would get attention. <laughs> I mean, uh, they rapidly shift emotions, uh, which is used to manipulate people and cause high anxiety. They intentionally isolate people from organizational resources. Now, what does that mean? They might uh, like cut someone off from, I don't know, funding for a project. I think resources means like the tools to do their job. Okay. Uh, they're quick to blame others for mistakes or for incomplete work, even though they are guilty. They encourage coworkers to torment, alienate, harass, and or humiliate other peers. <laughs> wow. <laughs> so this is a real biff. When's the serial killing come in? Well, there's no violence in here, although, I mean, these are all on the edge behaviors. 
Uh, they take credits for other people's accomplishments. They steal and or sabotage other people's work. They refuse to take responsibility for misjudgments or errors. This one is very interesting to me. Responds inappropriately to stimuli, such as with a high-pitched and forced laugh. Responds inappropriately to stimuli. Right. So let's say that someone is doing a presentation and they put like a funny gif in it, right? Okay. The other people in the meeting or conference room, you know, kind of chuckle. But in this case, the workplace psychopath would inappropriately emit a high-pitched forced laugh. Like, <laughs> like the Joker. <laughs> I definitely know some psychopaths. Now, when you say that they were laughing at a funny gif, you do mean like a thank God it's Friday with minions or Garfield type gif, right? Uh, yeah, kitty cat hanging from a branch. <laughs> That's what they always are. Workplace gifts and memes are always that. They're a little soft. They're never good. Yeah, they're a little soft. Yeah. And they threaten any perceived enemy with discipline or job loss in order to taint the employee file. I think that was just an excuse to get the word taint in there. (laughs) That's the first thing I thought of. Uh, Taint stood out to me. They set unrealistic and unachievable job expectations. To set employees up for failure, they refuse or are reluctant to attend meetings with more than one person, which is kind of interesting. Interesting. Do you know, I don't know, is this a dumb question? I'm not sure. Is the psychopath doing all of these things intentionally or is it like a subconscious, you know, they're not even aware they're doing it sort of thing? I think partly it's probably a bit of both. Like partly it comes naturally, like they have the genes for it and they have a brain for it. There's actually like a, I was reading an article that actually didn't pan out to any useful notes for the podcast other than to tell you that it was an article about a neuroscientist who is studying the brains of psychopaths. And then for another project or a similar project, he had scans of his family's brains, like all healthy brains. But when he was going through them, he was like, oh, one of the psychopath brain scans got him with my family ones. And they did some more testing on there, like, no, this is your brain. Uh, you have a psychopath brain. And then when, he, he, when this neuroscientist who was studying psychopathy talked to people from his past, like teachers, coaches, other adults in the family, about him growing up, and they were like, yeah, you're, of course you're a psychopath. We told you that you had, you, this was psychopathic behavior all the time. And I don't know, it was interesting to hear him talk about, like, recognizing being a psychopath, for him, it basically comes out to being very emotionally flat all the time. Like, hmm. for him, he doesn't treat people exceptionally poor or exceptional. he doesn't treat his family exceptionally well. He treats strangers, his family, everyone with the same sort of, like, courtesy, but not like, you know, for his family, there's not like a... No depth. Right. You know what that article didn't tell you? The twist in all that is that he had to kill his family to get their brains out first to do the scans. <laughs> yeah. And then, then he was like, oh, I'm a psychopath. <laughs> but only because of the brain scans did he realize. Yeah. It's a hard way to learn that lesson. There's no going back. Yeah. That is fascinating though. So a few other things that a workplace psychopath uh, is up to. Uh, they invade personal privacy of others. They have multiple sexual encounters with other employees. Oh, baby. They develop new ideas without any real follow through. I mean, yeah, just to go back to it for a minute, it does stand out. Obviously, this is all like risky, wild (laughs) behavior, but Mm -hmm. I don't know. It just stands out among all of them that like, while they're doing all this crazy stuff, they're like, how about I hump everybody too? If everyone who did that was a psychopath, then there'd be very little non-psychopaths left in the world. Yeah. Isn't the workplace like the number one place that people hook up with other people? Or not the place, but where they meet the people that they hook up with. Yeah, probably not in the last year, but yeah. Well. Uh, that's where we hooked up. <laughs> right. Uh, very self-centered, extremely egotistical. They often borrow money and other material objects without any intention of giving it back. Yeah, when are you going to give me back my pearl necklace, Brandon? <laughs> is that a disgusting sex joke or is that a joke <laughs> that you wear a pearl necklace? Hmm. Let's move on. You said items of value. And so I said my pearl necklace. I just said Sorry. other material objects. Material objects. Also, pearl necklace would apply. Okay. Just kind of weird of all the things. They'll do whatever it takes to close the deal with no regard for <laughs> ethics or legality. 
Uh huh. Basically, a psychopath is a rascal. Yeah, we had to kill the last tennis podcast to start this one. Whatever it takes to close the deal. Mm -hmm. There you go. We know what it takes to be a psychopath. Now, how do those behaviors, what are the jobs we are finding more of those behaviors? Is this a percentage basis? Yeah. Or does it matter? By propor okay. highest proportion. Highest proportion of careers that have psychopaths. Yes. Let me start with a few that I'm not even sure they're on the list, but I'll throw them out. How about a um, teacher? No, teacher is actually on the, there was like an opposite list for the yeah. 10 least likely to have psychopaths and teachers are on that list. Yeah, I didn't think teachers would be on there, but I wanted to throw a curveball in there. How about taxi driver? There's no taxi drivers on here. How about the fucking lunch lady at my elementary school? Because she was definitely a psychopath. No, why was she a psychopath? She just fucking mean to everybody for no reason. Was she remorseless and devoid of guilt? Yeah, and she was having sex with all the employees. Was she like a, a good looking lunch lady? No, no. The sex thing I might have made up. Oh. Although I can't rule it out. No lunch ladies. Yeah. See, well, I know CEO is probably high up there. That one is number one. <laughs> yes. Okay, well. So, yeah, CEO I mean, is number one. I can't one. help but be good at this. Yeah, you're so good. You guessed who fucking wild left fields. It's like you... <laughs> <laughs> it's like the first pitch, you know, you probably missed like by a couple feet. The second pitch, you foul tipped and it went into the stands and bounced off like a child's head. And they were rushed out of the stadium. And then the third pitch, it was just an out-of-the-park home run. Well, listen, the first few was just part of the show. I'm a showman, Brandon. I'm here to give our listeners some entertainment. Well... It's all very controlled. You're going to have to... Go ahead. You're going to have to step in with some entertainment here because once we get... Once you've made the guess, there's no... Oh, that's it? <laughs> there's, you know, I've, I've got a couple uh, ideas here of possible CEO psychopaths uh, that I can think of. Okay. The My Pillow guy came to mind right away. Oh, fuck that guy, by the way. He appears on one of those, like, One American News, I think it is, the OAN mm -hmm. um, network. He appears on yeah, there a lot. Right. Did you see recently he funded and produced and, and made and starred in, like, a two and a half hour documentary about how the election was rigged <laughs> and aired it on that network, OAN or whatever it's called? Brought to you by My Pillow. Like, even the network beforehand was like, these are his opinions, not ours, blah, blah, blah. Oh, I did but see like, that think, disclaimer, yeah. Yeah, I think even if you're on this guy's side, even if you're one of the idiots out there that thinks the election was rigged, I think even you're saying, okay, cool it, Mike, a little bit. <laughs> like, he like, needs to not be yeah. the representative. He needs to not be on screen. Yeah. But he needs to use the behind-the-scenes MyPillow money. Yeah, I, I'm with you on him. Steve Jobs sounds like uh, he was a psychopath. Yeah, I always hear that. I don't, I've never like seen the Steve Jobs movies or read the book, so I don't really know why, but I always hear people say he was an asshole. Yeah. Do you have any uh, highlights for me? No. I know that he like denied he was the father of his daughter for a while. Huh. That wasn't very nice. Let's look him up. Let's look him up. I'm sure someone's okay. written a bunch of fucking shit about him. There's probably a whole section on Wikipedia that just says some shit about him. Let's see. God, he's been dead 10 years, Brandon. That's so weird. And there's a picture of him on Wikipedia holding the iPhone 4. And the iPhone 4 looks like a child's toy now. Man, we've come a long way. It is a child's toy now. Because by now, if you have That's that true. iPhone, you've probably said, like, this is for my kid to watch YouTube on when I'm trying to, like, drink in the garage. <laughs> <laughs> I uh, haven't looked through all this shit. Let's just assume Steve Jobs was a fucking psychopathic asshole. <laughs> That's fine with me. You know who else? Jeff Bezos. Bezos. Bezos, whatever the fuck. Pure psychopath. Donald Trump is or was a CEO. Maybe the most famous CEO. Honestly, objectively. Take politics out of it. If you go through that checklist again, and I'm not asking you to because there's a lot, but if you were to go through that checklist again of all the psychopathic traits... He checks pretty much all he these checks boxes. every single one, yeah. Just today, he's taking credit for other people's accomplishments, <laughs> which are the, the vaccine. <laughs> right. 
he says, I hope everyone remembers. He said it twice. He's, With an exclamation point. Yeah, he's One like, asshole. he's king of psychopath CEO mountain. Now, I don't know if this is something we'll end up cutting or not. We used to work together at a company headquartered in Tulsa, Oklahoma, that's no longer there. And the CEO of that company uh, was a, a man, an older man. An old white man. And he was a definite psychopath. He also checks a ton of the boxes on this list. Give us like two or three highlights. You know, some of the more outrageous stuff he did. He used to say openly racist things at company meetings, including and especially at annual holiday luncheons. Where we'd have a, you know, 1,000 person company prayer led by. Oh, yeah, a convocation him. led by his like personal priest. Do you remember um, how there was some young woman who everyone recognized was awful? And when someone asked him or re recommended getting rid of her, he said he wanted to keep her around because she's <laughs> good for she's morale. Good for morale. <laughs> Well, look, we don't have to go on and on about this guy. No one knows who we're talking about, but I will close with this. One time I went to the bathroom at the office. I didn't know it was him at the time until he walked out, but he was in the stall mm -hmm. doing what you do in a stall and <laughs> reading Twitter. His entire pants were off. It completely while off, he was not doing around it. his ankles. He took them off and right. he draped them over the stall mm -hmm. door. Yeah. And then he. Um, he put them on with the door open. And he also used to have someone print out all of his emails and he would take a big stack of them into the shitter with him. <laughs> That's right. That's where he'd read emails. Anyway, we could do a podcast just on that guy. He's dead now. He's dead. Fuck him. All right. Should we move on from CEOs? Yes, that's CEO. All right. I knew you'd like that one. So we got to, no, got to talk about that guy. Okay, now when I make this next guess, I'm not offering an opinion on this guess, okay. so no one get mad at me. I'm just making guesses here. Is police officer in the top 10? Yes, it is. It's number seven. Okay. Who gives a shit if someone gets mad at you? You got to back the blue. I've been, reading a I've been reading a ton of shit about what cops have been up to lately, and if you're not a turd police officer, you better roll over and turn those turds in. Yeah. Do it. That's what that uh, all cops are bastards thing is all about. I don't know what that, that is. I'm sure you've seen the, the, the acronym ACAB, A-C-A-B, stands for all cops are bastards. And I don't know that I prescribe to that phrase exactly, but the idea is that, you know, if one out of 10 cops is a bad apple, the other nine good apples aren't being truly good apples if they're not turning in reporting the bad apple when they see him doing stuff that he shouldn't be doing. Well, I don't understand because apples can't talk and they don't have legs to go tell anybody. They, they don't have deductive reasoning. They don't have morals. How does this analogy work? Did you just come down with a case <laughs> of autism? Forget how <laughs> analogies work. I told you I'm a showman. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Fucking P.T. Barnum over here. Listen, <laughs> a showman. How about Derek Chauvin? Uh, he's the cop who is uh, currently on trial for the murder of George Floyd. Yeah. What's the latest on that? The latest on it is that the city has so much faith in uh, the justice system that they're putting up fences and boarding up windows. Basically saying, like, uh, we think everybody's yeah. going to be really upset because this guy's going to get off scot-free. Why you should, do that? Why? It's like an, it's an obvious murder. And why are so many people in the department, the city, the justice system, whatever, like why would willing you, to like yeah, roll over for this guy? Like who gives why a Why would you stick your neck out for it? Like, yeah, does he like owe you money and you need him to stay out of prison so you can get it back? Like who gives a fuck? Right. And what are you going to do? Uh, keep him on the force when he's not guilty? I mean, there's, no, you're in a no win situation. Like, I don't understand what you would. Yeah. Anyway. I also think, not a police officer, but a law enforcement officer, Sheriff Buford T. Justice from Smokey and the Bandit, the Smokey from Smokey and the Bandit. Okay, sure. Psychopath. He checks a ton of these boxes. Does he have sex with all the coworkers? He has temper tantrums. He ridicules people's work performance. He publicly humiliates. 
He's remorseless and devoid of guilt. He frequently lies to push his point. He definitely produces exaggerated bodily expressions. He's shaking his butt, huh? You've never seen Smokey and the Bandit. No. Well, you don't know nothing about cops then. Anything <laughs> else about police? For the good apples out there, the ones that can talk and carry a gun and a police badge, uh, if you're a good one, turn in the bad ones, and thanks for listening. Hey, Nick here. You've heard us talking about it before, and we're back again to talk to you about hosting your own podcast here with us at the Blue Wire Podcast Network. And there's no better place to host than Blue Wire Hustle. Hustle was created to give everyone the opportunity to take your podcast to the next level. Or if you want to host a podcast and you don't know where to start, Hustle is the perfect place for you. As part of the program, you'll receive personal cover art, Q&As with Blue Wire's top podcasters, access to our community discord, and an e-learning course full of tips and tricks. And on top of that, we'll help you get your show pushed out to Apple, Spotify, Google, Stitcher, and all the other big platforms. And the best part is you can get all of this for just 15 buckaroos a month, same rate as any other hosting site would charge just for the initial setup. It's a really good deal. So if you're ready to do more than just listening to me or Brandon, then make your own voice heard in Hustle. Acceptance into the program is limited, so get your application in today. To apply, go to bwhustle.com slash join. Check out the description box in this episode to find out more, but that's bwhustle.com slash join. Okay, what about a chef? Holy shit, good guess. Chef is number nine on this list. Now, why did you guess chef? I fucking knew it. Because, (laughs) honestly, one of the things you were, when you were rattling off the checklist there, you mentioned temper tantrum. Yeah. (laughs) In my mind, I see a lot of chefs throwing temper tantrums about souffles and shit. Well, tell me which one you thought of first. (laughs) Gordon Ramsay, listener of the show. Gordon Ramsay. I only know like one chef immediately right off the top of my head. And when I think about him, I think about him fucking yelling at somebody, calling them a donkey. (laughs) (laughs) What did he say exactly? Oh, I don't know. He just gets pissed off and tells him like, it's fucking rubbish, mate. You fucking donkey. (laughs) (laughs) I've never watched like Hell's Kitchen or I've never watched a show with him on it. I've only seen the little clips here and there. Like there's one where he made you know, the contestant, whoever, like the junior chefs Mm -hmm. that he's controlling and (laughs) humiliating on the show. (laughs) He made one of them put his two breads sandwiched against their face and and said, now what are you? (laughs) Yeah, I'm an idiot sandwich. He definitely has public humiliation of others, but there's a lot of like, I can't say for sure that Gordon Ramsay is remorseless and devoid of guilt. Maybe in the kitchen. How much, you know, maybe he's been like Nick here on the Tennis Podcast. He's a showman. You know, I think a lot of these reality shows... He says, I'm the Nick. I'm the Nick of this kitchen. People are like, you're the fucking who? He says, this is a Nick chin now. Am I right? (laughs) And then they come get the butterfly nets because Gordon Ramsay isn't himself anymore. (laughs) He's talking to the apples, asking when they're going to turn in the bad one. (laughs) Oh, fuck. Oh, Christ, I'm really funny. (laughs) I do think on these reality shows, a lot of times, the personalities are kind of turned up. Yeah, they amp that up. They always also seem to get someone, put someone in there and push them into, like, mouthing off to Gordon. An oven? Oh. No, no, they're like, you know, they always make (laughs) them stand there kind of in a group all facing Gordon Ramsay. Yeah. And it's like they probably tell one of them, like, all right, you're out on this episode, no matter what. So, you better go down a blaze of glory. And tell Gordon Ramsay that his scrambled eggs <laughs> suck. And they're like, you know, they'll mumble under their breath. Like, yeah, well, maybe it's because your scrambled eggs suck. And then he like fucking snaps his head, turns beet red and snarls at them. He's like, what did you say, you fucking donkey? <laughs> no, British people, they always say, you fucking cunt. <laughs> well, he can't say that on Hell's Kitchen. <laughs> Although I do think they bleep him a lot. But I swear to God, I've heard him call someone a donkey before, and it just destroyed me. Like, how much does it have to hurt to be called a donkey? I've never watched Hell's Kitchen either. Like you, all I've seen is clips here and there. Do you think they've, like, toned that down a bit in, like, the anti-bullying, you know? (laughs) A good point. Because he does, like, just climb on their ass. It just seems like they can't do anything right. 
He's a regular Sir Mix-a-Lot climbing on asses. Probably means a lot more when he, if he gives them a pat on the back at the end, though. Yeah. I think that's an example of abusive behavior. <laughs> yeah. What about uh, Paula Dean? Would she be a know. psychopath? I don't know anything about her. She's got a lot of butter. She uses a lot of butter. And she had a racist, she planned a racist wedding, a plantation wedding. All I got to do is look at her picture and I'll tell you if she's a psychopath no. or not. Yeah. Oh, yeah. When I knew you were looking at her picture, I knew you were going to say yes. What about... Big, okay. Big time. Since we don't know anything about him, look up Wolfgang Puck and tell me by looking at his picture, is he a psychopath? Oh, so, I know the name for sure. Right. And he does look like his name would be Wolfgang Puck. He's one of the very few people who looks exactly yeah. like their weird name. It depends on the picture for me. There is one picture of him holding up like, I don't know pounds and pounds of meat like raw meat uncooked meat and he's kissing it or eating it so oh, I see i'll go him. with psychopath i see him kissing that meat yeah i think that's a rump maybe even it is hard to tell from his pictures his pictures do not scream psychopath but his success does yep if you're successful sorry you're a psychopath yep psycho so there you go what about like an actor yes entertainer i'm gonna say yes maybe it's not well, media, TV and radio media. I think, realize now media might be referring to like on-air personalities. Yeah, that's how I would take it. Okay. Well, I think we ought to throw actors in here too. Okay. So, then we're going to say I got that right. Got it. Yes. What number? That's number three. Media, TV and radio. Knew it. Now, he just died and I love to speak ill of the dead. Rush Limbaugh. Yeah. Definitely a psychopath. Remorseless. He truly rushed to the grave, huh? Uh, he didn't. He might be in uh, limbo right now, or limba in purgatory right now, huh? He's probably in hell. God. Well. Thinking about our local news anchors, though, from what little I know about our local news anchors, none of them seem yeah. like psychopaths. They all seem fairly normal. It's about the level of success you get. So, to become like a national to become a rush personality. Limbaugh. Yeah. You have to be a psychopath because you have to destroy lives on your way to the top. <laughs> so think about Ryan Seacrest. You got to stomp balls on your way up. Ryan Seacrest has fucking killed people to get to where he is. Yeah, that's a good point. He's a psychopath. Tom Cruise is a psychopath. Yeah. Oh yeah. Well, Look, we're going to save a lot more time by just saying everybody who's had any success in Hollywood is a psychopath. All of them. 100%. Kevin Spacey? Except The Rock and except Jerry Seinfeld. Kevin Spacey, yeah. Man, it's a real bummer because I... <laughs> I don't know how this sounds, but I just fucking loved him in House of Cards. Yeah. So. It sucks. It, it sucks about uh, Mel Gibson too. In fact, I put Mel Gibson here with a question mark. Yeah. Could he be a psychopath? And then my note after that was, I refuse. I won't you won't let, talk about it? I just won't let that part in, yeah. Yeah, and it's hard when you find out that your heroes and sidekick hosts, podcast hosts, are truly bags of shit. Time for some more shitbag guessing. Okay, well, I've been on fire so far. So, I'm going to stay on fire here. What other jobs are there in the world? I think I've hit almost all of them. CEO, media personality, police officer and chef. That's pretty much everything. <laughs> chef really stands out like a sore thumb, doesn't it? It's like Michael Scott in The Office. I think it's the episode where he's speaking at Ryan's business class and he says there's like six industries in the world. And he goes through like, you know, <laughs> I can't remember them, but railroads was one of them. Yeah, they, they don't cover every <laughs> at all. Not even close. <laughs> okay, how about um, a doctor? Surgeon is number five. I told you I'm on fire. You can't put me out if you tried. Uh -huh. If you were a fireman who's not on this list, you're like a truffle you pig for out. psychopaths. <laughs> Surgeon's number five, and I don't know a ton of surgeons. It's not quite as easy. I don't know any surgeons personally. <laughs> you don't fucking say. It's not very easy to point to like a famous surgeon, let alone one that we know is a psychopath. The ones that are on the reality shows where you're like, what's that reality show called? Um, oh, I, I wrote that down. Reality show plastic surgeons. Yeah. What's that really big show though? 
Oh, wasn't there one like called botched or something? Or no, nah, botched. That... Botched is like is highlighting mistakes. There's the pla- there's some of those plastic surgery shows that are just a long drawn out before and after with some other shit sprinkled into. But you know, I know people tuned into this podcast to hear us struggle to remember <laughs> surgery reality shows. Yeah, but those guys have got to be psychopaths. What about Sanjay Gupta? Who's that? I don't know. He's a he's a surgeon who like comes on CNN sometimes. Well, listen. Like I said earlier, anyone who's successful in the world gotta in any a, line of work got to be a psychopath. Sign. What's was his name? Sanjay. What? Sanjay Gupta. He does look empty in the face. You know what's the difference between a psychopath and a sociopath? I knew you were going to ask me that, and I don't know. Let's do a quick search. I've looked it up. I've read it many times. I can never remember. I have no fucking clue. Some experts, this is from WebMD. Some experts see sociopaths as, quote, hot-headed. They act without thinking how others will be affected. Psychopaths are more cold-hearted and calculating. They carefully plot their moves and use aggression in a planned-out way to get what they want. Well, according to this... Do you remember my question 20 minutes ago when I said, are psychopaths in the workplace doing this shit consciously or subconsciously? Mm-hmm. This would seem to indicate that they're calculating and cold hearted, yeah, whereas yeah. sociopaths are more uh, reactive, I think. Yeah, it maybe a sociopath, it's almost like, I wouldn't say that they can't help it, but they're not consciously trying to do it. It's just the way they are. Yeah. Whereas a psychopath may say like, yes, this is who I am or how I am, but like, I'm going to go through multiple steps to make this thing happen. What O path are you, Brandon? Uh, between the two of these, I would probably be closer to a psychopath, but. You got that fucking right. But I don't check fucking any of these boxes. Mm. Yeah, that's one psychopath's opinion. Uh, did you have anything else on surgeon? No. Nope. So I'm thinking of every job in the world is running through my head right now. I've hit almost all of them. Oh, I know. Lawyer. A lawyer or attorney. Is number two. Brandon, psychopath or not, you got to give me some credit here. You're always looking for this credit. Your whole goal here is to guess this list. You're just, you're, <laughs> you're, you're, just, you're doing what you're supposed to be doing. This is going as expected. Well, I heard you on Customers Also Watched, the podcast, mm-hmm. talking to Erica about how bad I am at list guessing. Pretty bad sometimes. Well, this one, not <laughs> so bad. You definitely know your psychopath shit. Now, yeah, Rudy Giuliani. <laughs> <laughs> I want to know what he's doing now. I kind of miss him a little bit. Did you see he had a <laughs> he had a lawsuit for like four billion dollars or whatever? I'm so happy about that. Someone suing him? Yeah. Uh, what's the company? The voting machine company. Oh yeah, the uh, Dominion. Yeah, Dominion. V- he said that they have like, he was like, their machines were all fucked up and they fucked up the election and they're like, well, <laughs> I guess we're going to see your no law understanding ass in court. But anyway, Rudy Giuliani, I do kind of miss him too. Just see, just see him make a fucking ass <laughs> of himself fucking constantly. weird shit all the time showing up with like black stuff, black goo dripping down his head. Or mopping mopping snot off his face and wiping it all over his wife. (laughs) These are things that really happened, people. Brandon's not just making this shit up. Yeah, he wiped sweat off of his head and his face and his nose. He wiped dripping snot sweat off of his nose. And then he like wiped it on his wife and patted her leg and kind of mashed it (laughs) into her dress. (laughs) Oh, fuck. Oh, Rudy. Talk about taking what was a decent to very good reputation. Oh, my God. You know? <laughs> yeah. Just just taking that reputation and treating it like the snot in your nose. Stomping it out. He did to, to his, like, post-9-11 reputation, like, the equivalent of that uh, YouTube video of the hippopotamus who, like, takes a dump and farts and spins its tail and flings it everywhere all at the same time. And the, there's like a crowd of people going like, whoa! <laughs> I've never seen this. What do I search to find it? Hippo, f- hippo fart. Poop. Hippo fart came up in the auto, 
in the autofill. <laughs> oh man, you, this is gonna fuck your day up. This is gonna derail. Thirty-seven us. million views. All right, <laughs> hang on. <laughs> I gotta get through this ad. Hang on. All right, here it comes. <laughs> this is one of Charlie's favorite videos. <laughs> give me, give me a minute, everybody. <laughs> the, the camera's zooming in on it. It's such a cute little area of the hippo, too. Now, can you hear it, too? Yes, was that real? (laughs) (laughs) That's Rudy Giuliani's reputation. If you think, this video has 206,000 likes, but 10,000 dislikes. Who's disliking this? And also, the top comment from JT Suits says, we have peaked as a a civilization. (laughs) Sometimes that top YouTube comment is just hot, (laughs) is hot, hot, hot hot shit. Oh my God. All right. I should get away from this. God damn. Thank you for bringing that into my life. You bet. Um, That's what really Giuliani did. Yeah. You know who else is a psychopath? Well, maybe not. I was going to say Saul Goodman, but Saul Goodman is not. No, he's not remorse. Without remorse. Yeah. Yeah. But he is very manipulative. Yeah, he has no problem with lying. Uh, he doesn't have any problem invading personal privacy. Doesn't have any problem having a hell of an ass either. No. What Speaking of hell of an ass, I'm surprised number one isn't this, my next guest, and that is um, politician. No, politician is not on here. Maybe they thought it was too obvious. Although there is one that is so close that I am... I'm actually a little bit confused as if it would count or not, and I don't think so. Uh, Government one- employee or something? Yeah, it's a civil servant is number 10. That has to be a politician. I got to think a politician falls under it, although under the definition of civil servant, I don't know that a, an elected official counts. Isn't civil servant one of those phrases that people use to describe politicians, even if they're using the phrase incorrectly? That is true, yeah. We're going to say it's politician or includes politicians. If, I mean, if that's the case, the notes are now too long to even try to, to, try to discuss. <laughs> yeah. Do you know any uh, psychopath politicians, Brandon? It'd be easier to name not psychopath politicians. Do any exist? I think Bernie, Bernie Sanders, Sanders. <laughs> is not a psychopath. I think Elizabeth Warren is not a psychopath. Yeah. Oh, but there's you know a lot. Who... I, I don't want to like, I don't want it to come across as like, left-leaning or bias against one party. I think both There's American, plenty of leftists. Yes, there's psychopaths. plenty of Democrat and Republican psychopaths. And libertarian. Definitely. Yeah. Most of them are probably libertarian. Brandon, would you ever run for office of any kind? No. I wouldn't even run for like homeowners association. No. <laughs> Absolutely not. Why not? You think you're too good for it? You think you're better than the rest of us? No, I have enough to do already just with like my job and two kids. I am not up to the challenge. I'm man enough to say like, I can't do it. You don't want me to do it. I'll do a bad job. Well, isn't that like kind of what you would want people to say? (laughs) Wouldn't we be a lot better off if all the people who wanted to run for office but weren't qualified would just admit like, I probably won't do a good job. There needs to be some sort. You know what they should do? Honestly. You remember the the guy you were telling me about that brain scanned his family? Mm -hmm. They need to do a brain scan of someone before they're elected into office. (laughs) And if there's psychopathic brain readings or however they do it, that person is ineligible. But, you know, I don't know. Like, I say that, but then they'll just lie. And, you know, they'll use their private, I don't know. Like, they, how do you police that? You got to take the brains out. Easy. Yeah, take the brains out. Yeah. You know... The civil servant that I come in with, uh, contact with most frequently would be the ones that work at like the local tag agency. Oh, God. Or at the courthouse if you have to go like pick up a piece of paperwork or file something. Is there anything worse? There's definitely some fucking psychopath. Like, there are like 52-year-old women who describe themselves as sassy but are like true psychopaths that work in those offices. Yeah. Do you like blood loss and decapitations and debris poking through your skin? 
If you like your gods angry, your buildings collapsible, and your insects organized into living quilts, Doomsday is the podcast for you. Subscribe to rediscover some of the most traumatic, bizarre, and awe-inspiring but largely unheard of disasters from throughout human history and around the world. This first season, you'll hear about the worst groin injury in the recorded history of medical science. People compressed to the height of a business card, preheated to the temperature of the sun, electrocuted by coconuts, and phrases like, the plague of horror had been cleared away by the cleansing mercy of the volcano. This is not the podcast you play around your kids, or while eating, or even in mixed company, but as long as you find yourself a little more historically engaged and learn something that could potentially save your life, our work is done. All this and more on Doomsday, history's most dangerous podcast, a funeral kazoo production on the Anchor FM network. Find it wherever podcasts are found. College Hoops is back and WinBet is live in your state, bringing you the action of real sports betting and online casino play all produced by Win Las Vegas. Get in on your favorite teams, Cinderella stories, and tournament upsets. Don't miss out on the madness. Generous promos, odds, and parlays are happening right now at WinBet. Get started today and you'll receive a special offer up to $500 risk-free sports bet. Terms and conditions apply. Get the details at wynnbet.com and download the app today. Okay, so you nailed civil servant because we bent the rules and you've got three left. And I will say one of these, I think, feels pretty clear and obvious to me. But the other two, I would say, are surprising. Thinking. One of these, I think, the personality-wise is very close to CEO. Like manager? Kind of. CFO? No, it's not a like a... No. Professor? No, there's no academics on this list. A uh, maestro? <laughs> like a... <laughs> you know, the guy that waves the little stick around for an orchestra. Which, by the way, there's no way that fucking does anything. I'm sorry. Okay, well, uh, <laughs> no, the maestro is not on here. You're a maestro, just fucking unsubscribe. How about a fuck? Okay, let me give me a moment here. If we go back to our list of behaviors, the very yeah. last one on this, I think, is a good clue. The last behavior is that they will do whatever it takes to close the deal. Oh, sales, salespeople. Yeah, salesperson. Number is number six. four on the list. Four knew it. Salesperson is another tough one where it's like it's hard to point to a famous salesperson in general, let alone a famous salesperson who is also a suspected or alleged psychopath. Although I think the late Billy Mays might fall under that. You know, think about that. How many fucking terrible and forgettable ads and infomercials have we all seen over the course of our lives? Billy Mays did it so much and so well that he's like the only famous <laughs> commercial spokesperson it. ever. Yeah. He had the brand. He had a like a very trustworthy, thick brown beard and a trustworthy smile. And he was always hawking some hot looking products. Thick butt too. All right. Okay, so salesperson, I mean, salesperson is such a broad category. I mean, how many tens or hundreds of millions of people are, sale, you know, considered a salesperson? You know who I specifically think of when I think of a psychopathic salesperson, though? Hmm. The guy, Car dealership? Yes, the guys who own large local automotive dealerships. So the guys that have, like, their name with the, yeah. on the sign, right? Yeah, but see, I would put that person more in the CEO category than the salesperson. But ultimately, it doesn't matter since they're both on here. So There are multiple dealerships in the Tulsa area that I will never, ever set foot on purely because their commercials are so obnoxious and they come off like so douchey in their commercials. Yes. There's this, I can't remember the name of the dealership, but the, but the guy always wears a baseball cap. And he, for some reason, always introduces his wife and he's always holding her hand. Something about the way he introduces her, I swear to God, it's like he's saying, hey, I'm blah, 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 and meet my exotic wife. I swear, like there is a sub, subconscious or subliminal, check out my exotic second wife. Their tagline for their automotive dealership is, 
let's do business. It just fucking rubs me the wrong way. Everything about it rubs me the wrong way. I think this guy's a psychopath. All right. So I need eight and six. Yeah. A hairdresser. No, that's not on here. These other two might be a little more difficult to guess. I'm trying to go through the, some of these behaviors and see if there's some that could highlight that might help. Uh, the career for number six, they also work very closely to media. And like I said, it was surprising for me to hear that this group has a large proportion of psychopaths. Like videographer? I don't know. Uh... You're actually not too far away. I'll go ahead and... Number six is journalist. I knew it. I'm not trying to discount professor or psychologist Kevin Dutton of Oxford's work, but I know a, a few journalists and none of them personally know any journalists that are psychopaths. That you know of? How many dead bodies are they hiding under their floorboards? Have you checked the floorboards? Well, are Fox people on Fox News considered journalists? Uh... Okay, how about Anderson Cooper? Do you think Anderson Cooper is a psychopath? Yes. He comes across as empathetic sometimes, right? I'm not saying that all these people are outwardly psychopathic, but... You're right, he's successful. (laughs) Right, if you can't be successful, (laughs) with very few exceptions, can you be successful and not be a psychopath? Is that a hot take? Maybe it is, but... The only exceptions are Willie Nelson and Dolly Parton. Jerry Seinfeld. And everyone else is a psychopath. Yeah. Heard it here first? I don't think that's controversial to say. I think most people would agree with us, right? Yeah, you're right. Everybody who's successful is a psychopath. You got too many psychopaths running around. You ever think about, um, I think about this sometimes, it's random, but like, what if you found out someone at like a Tom Hanks level or someone like super famous, a Nick Amell level? That they were a serial killer. And no one knew. Tom Hanks has been murdering people. (laughs) Tom Hanks strangles young women in the basement of his Malibu home. Can you fucking imagine the news frenzy? It'd be like O.J. Simpson, except, If we found out, if the news broke, (laughs) that there were a dozen skeletons of dead women in and around the home, the Malibu home of Tom Hanks, America's sweetheart... It or Barack be... Obama. Oh my <laughs> like, god. <laughs> I'm just trying to pick out people that are like pretty universally well, he's not universally loved, you know what I mean? But like but nice yeah, people people. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Or like if Oprah. Yeah, if like Oprah was like raped and murdered eight kids. <laughs> oh my god. And be... <laughs> It'd be the biggest thing ever. It would break America's brain. Yeah. Fortunately, I don't think we're ever gonna find that out about any of them, but Yeah, that would break America's brain. Yeah. Okay. I have one left. Yeah. You know those, they're popping up everywhere now, those little cell phone repair shops? Mm Mm-hmm. What about about those people? (laughs) (laughs) No, I don't think so. People who own cell phone stores slash uh, vape shops. Yeah. Okay. They should be on here, but no, they're not. Telemarketing won't be on here. You know, I realize now in my notes for this last one, I didn't pick some very good examples until I just thought of all of the famous examples, and they are all very clearly psychopaths. Is there a famous example of this one? Oh, yes. Yes. But as soon as I name one of them, you'll know exactly what I'm talking about. Musician? No, not musicians. That has to be in media, probably. This is another group that has power. You know, we talked about civil servants, police officers, journalists, to some extent, have power with the news, with truth and knowledge. Surgeons have power over your health. They all do. A lawyer has power. CEO has power. This is another kind of power that's wielded over people and can be used by a psychopath. (sighs) So it's nothing government, right? Nope. There's one specific name that I want to say that I know you'll know it as soon as I say it, say it, but it's a great example. Power over people. Yeah, power and influence. So it can't be a dog groomer. Mm-mm. Is this person in the public eye? Like uh, this job title? 
Yeah, like in the community eye mo- mostly. Oh, I see. Community eye. Yeah, most of the people who work in this job are at the like community level. Like a police officer. They work, you know, most police officers aren't known nationally. Most people who work in this job are not known nationally. Of course, the ones who are known nationally, the huge successful ones, are clearly obvious psychopaths. Fuck, like a uh, therapist or something? No. Nurse? Uh, fisherman? No, Farmer? think about like, if you have a little town back like 150 years ago, if you were going to make a little town out in the middle of nowhere, right? Yeah. You have your saloon with your drinking and your whores. You got a little store. You got a little uh, schoolhouse. What else? Oh, they... church, pastor, preacher, priest. Clergy. Clergy, okay. Uh, clergy sounds Catholic. Does it also include Protestant religious authorities? It, well, Wikipedia also just says formal leaders within established religions. Okay. Yeah. So, yeah, clergy. The best, like, national examples, guys like like televangelists. Joel Osteen. And... Yeah, Joel Osteen is definitely a psychopath. I mean, there's proven psychopaths. Farting preacher. In the farting preacher and mm-hmm. some of the other televangelists that have had scandals over the years. You have to have a certain healthy ego to be even a small-time clergy, I think. Like, you are ordained by God to deliver his message? Yeah. I mean, I'm not saying they're all psychopaths, but I'm saying that you're going to check a few of the boxes, at least, that you went over at the top. Especially sex with coworkers. Exaggerated bodily expressions as a mean of gaining (laughs) attention? (laughs) Thank you, Jesus. Preacher that I was thinking of from when I was a kid rapidly shifts between emotions used to manipulate people or cause anxiety. He used to get all worked up and foaming at the mouth while he was like ranting and raving about against like sinners and stuff. And then about he would the, like the gays. And, yeah, and then he would like cry and weep and stuff. Do you think it was all bullshit? I don't know. Like, was he really crying or was he turning on the the emotion at the right time? I mean. He turned it on three times a week, Sunday morning, Sunday night, and Wednesday night. He yeah. it was like just different versions of the same performance. You know, just this week, I rewatched the movie The Last Exorcism. Have you seen that? If I have, it's been a long time. Yeah, it's like it. eight or ten years old. But yeah, the very premise of the movie, real quick, is that there's a preacher, really old school, small town preacher, grew up in the church. His father was a preacher. And he decides that he doesn't believe in God anymore. And so he wants to make a documentary about how exorcisms are and God and God in general are all like human things. But he's still a preacher and he's lying to his congregation, pretending he still believes. And he's one of those preachers that's old school. It's like up there, like, you know, yelling and shaking his hands and walking all over the room and everyone's yeah. standing up and amening. And he's talking to the, doc- the filmmaker and he's saying, once you're in that mode, you can say anything and they'll react. And he says, I'll bet you I could start reading my Nana's banana pudding recipe. They bet $10 and he goes up there and he's talking about God and he's like, God is good, blah, blah, blah. And then he just starts spouting off a recipe for banana pudding. And he's like, you put the bananas in the pan, you put the pan in the thing. And the crowd's all jumping up and down and cheering. And like, holy God. Yeah. So Last Exorcism, pretty good movie, by the way. Yeah. uh, From what I vaguely remember, it was good. Uh, so that's it. Well, I exercise this list pretty damn good, huh? You definitely are familiar with the work of a psychopath. Let me run us through once more the top 10 careers for psychopaths. Number 10 was civil servant. Number nine was chef. <laughs> <laughs> that's the <laughs> best one. Uh, like funny to me. Uh, number eight is clergy. Number seven, police officer. Number six, journalist. Number five, surgeon. Number four, salesperson. Number three, media person or personality. Number two is lawyer. And number one, CEO. Yeah. You know, the ultimate psychopath is the president, right? If you were to do a brain scan of every U.S. president in history, Mm -hmm. you're going to see a lot of shit. I think you'd see a lot of mad cow disease. Yeah. Well, thanks, Brandon, for taking us through this exciting journey. But you missed one psychopath on the list. Hmm. People who review our podcast. 
Let's hear these psychopaths. Sound off, psychos. Big time psychopaths. First one comes from psychopath known as Dabbling Dads on Apple Podcasts. Nick and Brandon have great chemistry. Their catalog is wide ranged and can definitely find anything that might interest you. Their research and conveying of said research is professionally, all caps, done. Would you call your research for this episode professional, Brandon? Hell no, but thank you. Dabbling Dads continues, I started with Jim Carrey grossing movies and it did not disappoint. Just subscribe and find the episodes that interest you. You won't be disappointed. You won't. Maybe this guy's not a psychopath. He's making a lot of sense to me, so I don't think he can be a psychopath. So thank you. The next one comes from Taco Bell 2010 on Apple Podcasts. I've been holding on to that, email, to that name for like a decade now. Hosts have a great chemistry, and I found myself learning a ton while laughing out loud. This is a super easy show to get addicted to. So, what do you think the odds are that this is legitimately like the CEO of Taco Bell reviewing us on Apple Podcasts? This is Johan Taco himself. Johan <laughs> <Yo>, Taco. <laughs> There's a million taco places. How do you know that Johan's not running one of those? Why does it have to be Taco Bell? And even if it was Johan Taco... Taco Bell was founded how many fucking decades ago? Don't you think a new Johan Taco would be, a new person would be running at the show by now? He's old. He only eats soft beef tacos now. <laughs> All right. Well, Johan Taco and Dabbling Dads, we appreciate your non-psychopath reviews. If you want to leave a review for us, psychopath or otherwise, just rate our show five stars, leave a review, and I'll read it. Brandon. Yes. <laughs> uh, there's no psychopath I'd rather do this show with than you for 125 episodes and counting. Hell yeah, bro. Yeah. All right. Well, if you want to get more of this sweet, sweet content from us, you can follow us on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, at Tennis Pod. You can also subscribe to our YouTube channel, at Tennis Podcast. We post full episodes there, as well as minute or less teasers of every episode, categorized by genre on YouTube. And if you want early and ad-free episodes, go to patreon.com slash tennis pod. And if you want to hear me stop shilling shit, then just press stop on your podcast player. It's the only way to get you to stop. <laughs> Thank you for listening. We'll be back with my list next week on episode 126. Thanks, guys. Goodbye. This is Haley. This is Jordan. And we host Spinsters, a basketball podcast. Jordan, what do you look for in a person? Hmm, someone that subscribes to Spinsters, of course. Listen to Spinsters wherever you get your podcasts.